And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? We are back. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Wes and Robert here, chatting it up. It's been it's been a bit. I've been I've been under the weather, and Robert has been moving. So we missed a couple episodes last week. I was gonna do it on my own, but I woke up both those days thinking, Ugh. I had a uh, I have sinus issues for those of you know who have been following me for a long time, and it's just it never goes away. It never goes away. And I had a sinus infection. I don't know three weeks ago. Got the antibiotics that I needed, and then uh, got through them, and then it just came back with a vengeance. So I had to go back to the doctor, get some more, and had the exact same symptoms and everything. And then you go through the whole protocol of, do you have COVID? Do you have strep throat? Do you have the flu? What do you got? So, yeah, fun stuff. And Robert, you've been, you're, you moved. <clears throat> I did. I moved from uh, College Station, where I was at Texas A&M for my master's, to Houston, where I'll be back doing a second master's on to my PhD. Uh, the weird part is my first class out of the shoot is actually PhD level. And, you know, I, I listen, I don't, I don't even understand the difference between a master's and a PhD at this level. So, I mean, <laughs> except for the thesis, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, and a whole lot more school, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got, yeah, I've got five more years. Yep. How many degrees do you have now? Uh, I have to think about that. Three, three. Okay. <laughs> yeah. One more, one more than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then I, when I'm done, I'll have five. Yeah, that's, <laughs> so that's crazy. Good for you. You know, I'm at the point where what is up? Petty Picasso in the house. We've got so we got the TikTok stuff. We do this live every morning at uh, well, not every morning, Monday, Wednesday. If you guys are just joining us for the first time, we got a lot of people on TikTok. Thanks for hanging out here. Uh, appreciate it. We've got some moderators in the room. Um, thanks for the gifts. We appreciate you guys. If you subscribe, you can make sure that you get hopped in here. You can check it out on YouTube live. It's on Facebook all over the place. Uh, we've been doing this for a while. So uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We're just Mondays. We have just kind of a conversation between us about what's going on and certain things like that. And then on Wednesdays, we talk about Robert's book, Ars Victorious, which is out um, out now. We're, we're getting through it. We're almost done with the book. Um, and it's been a good one. We, uh, we have just been, you know, going for it. I, you know, I wanted to t- kind of talk about Robert, something that with the election stuff we've been talking a little bit about and not not political but just in general about absolutes because there are people who are out there who have these absolutes um and i know i'm putting you on the spot but that's kind of what we do here i've had some people just kind of talk about in in life in general i think that people put these things on you and tell you that you cannot be my friend if you do this or you do that or blah 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 like they tell you hey right, right. If you vote for, and this is the latest one that I heard, if you're voting for Trump, then unfriend me. I don't want to be your friend because I don't believe in the things that you believe in because of Trump. Um, And a vote for Trump is a vote against, you know, whatever. Like there's all these absolutes and there's all these things that people put on you that say that you can do this and you can do that. So like your friendship is conditional to what they think. And it can be for anything. You know, putting conditions on who you are. But that's the that's one of the examples that I saw just now. Like I had, I, I've seen these videos over and over again. You you cannot, and I just don't understand that. How can people talk in absolutes? Have you ever had that situation, or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, that that's a relatively new phenomenon. Um, you know, again, age being a factor here. My first election was uh, Jimmy Carter, right, mm-hmm. and then my second election was Ronald Reagan. Um, Things were about uh, policy and they were about the laurel, the, the idea of what we call the loyal opposition, which means that, you know, the minute you were elected president, you were my president. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we would be I'm opposed to your policy, but I'm not opposed to you as a human being. You know, that, that we, we believe we've got two good candidates and we don't you know, there's always been mudslinging in that. that that's always been a but we had a tendency to rise above. Right. So we right. weren't so partisan but so to give you the story so i was in uh, undergrad at a and m when reagan won election right and so my i had a constitutional law professor who comes in there's like 14 as if in the class and cost and so he walks in and he 
he Indian sets on the desk, right? He doesn't sit down like a normal professor. Indian sets on the desk and says, we're either going to talk about the election or uh, we're going to take a test. Mm-hmm. And so the 14 of us were like, uh, talk about the election. That sounds good to me. And so what was so interesting about that was, of course, he went on for a 45 minute tirade about how Reagan was going to get us into nuclear war and blah, 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 right? All these things that were supposed to, thank you for the gift. Uh, all these things that were supposed to happen, of course, you know, they, they didn't happen. But that's the first time I was exposed to this very radical idea of opposition, right? Because I'd never seen that before. I'd never seen the the vitriol. Well, that was just a little bitty taste, right? That's that's 1980. Uh, where we've evolved to now is, is it, you know, your, your party's almost like your flag. It's us against right. them. It's very, very, very partisan. And uh, um, I, I argue with my leftist friends all the time because I'm not right. I'm actually in the center. And I argue with my leftist friends and I say, you're not really left. Yeah. And they're like, yes, I am. I said, no. OK, let's go over some issues. Let's talk about education. Let's talk about the environment. Let's talk about family. Let's talk about these things. And you know, what happens is, is people don't disagree that much. Right. And so the vitriol really shocks me. Right. And it's this idea of tar and feathering a candidate. Mm-hmm. Like there's something so bad about Joe Biden or so bad about Kamala Harris that they couldn't be a good leader. Right. Well, I mean, they may not be my first choice, but doesn't mean they can't be an effective leader. I mean, they're not, they're just the head of the organization. Now I do judge them on their ability to lead. In other words, there's, I think think it's like 2,700 positions that you have to uh, nominate as a president, right? And position people. So it is about what your 2,700 people do. It's not necessarily about you. And so the idea that you're you're tar and feathering people is is bizarre to me that we can't be friends. Do you realize that if we had 10 choices for president, like ice cream flavors, then we could have this discussion about it being, but you're only giving me two choices. Right. And then you're telling me that if I don't choose, then I'm not your friend. I mean, come on, really? Yeah. It's not like you give me 10 choices. Nope. Yeah. And I think it's insane because I think that we, we've talked about this. There's a lot of people who, who are, um, who are talking about that and who are saying, you know, here is this and here is that, like, you can only do this. You can only do that. It doesn't matter. There's no, and there, there isn't an absolute. It's, it's funny. We had a conversation the other day, and, and we were talking about, and you and I like to look down the middle. We like to look on both sides of this whole situation and talk about how things are and what they are and understanding that, you know, he is our president. President Biden is our president. We may mm-hmm. not agree with the things that he does, but he's our president. That is a position that is, we've put this person in charge of our country, just like we did Trump before, Bush, all those people beyond that. You know, um, but there's these things going around where like, if you have an American flag in your front yard now, it's like you are automatically right leaning. You're automatically against, you know, whatever you're woke, you're racist, you're this, you're that. It's like they're turning the American flag into what the Confederate flag supposedly stood for or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, like these are the things that are happening. And it's insane to me because we're talking about democracy here and you're saying we're a democracy. We're not really a democracy, but like there's no democracy in this whole situation. And there's all these things coming out. That's just showing that it's everything is corrupt. The whole thing is corrupt. It's insane. And I just don't understand how people can say, if you vote for Trump, then you're voting, you're a racist. Or if you put American flag up, you're a racist. Or if you are voting for Biden, then you want this economy to be destroyed. And just like, there's all these things that go back and forth. And then you can't you can't talk to a person. You can't have a conversation about it. You can't be. It's not that you're trying to convince someone to think your way, but to understand how you feel. Yeah, we've always been in a position of having these polarizing issues. Like, for example, growing up for me, what was polarizing was Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And so you were either for Vietnam or against Vietnam. And so if you were a soldier serving and remember, you had a draft back then. If you were a soldier serving and you decided to serve instead of evade the draft, then you were, you know, in my case, deserved to be spit on. And I'm like, why? You know, there are people that believe in their country, but don't necessarily believe in the war, right? right. They believe in service. My family's been serving since the Revolutionary War. I mean, 
I, I don't necessarily agree with. I, I darn sure don't agree with Vietnam. I didn't agree with Iraq and Afghanistan. I can go on, right? But yeah. that doesn't mean that I'm negative on servicemen. And I think that's one of the things that I, I remember people getting just as angry about things like uh, the last un, the last um, open um, convention for the Democrats was 1968. And so people are bringing back the idea of what they didn't want to do is they didn't want to go into the convention open. They wanted uh, Miss Harris or Vice President Harris to be the candidate mm -hmm. because what happened in 68 was they burned 10 blocks of Chicago. I mean, it was it was really, really bad. So they were trying to avoid that kind of skirmish. And my point to it all is I understand, but are we really representing America? And do we realize that most of us agree? And I say that whether you're left, right, whether you have a flag, don't have a flag. We agree on the things that are important, right? We think our kids should be educated. We think our uh, our streets should be safe, right? These are things that are that are not controversial. Um, most of us agree that you should love whoever you want to love as long as it's not a child, right? Everybody, right. two consenting adults. Pretty much people are um, a whole lot more tolerant than they were when you and I were both growing up. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more tolerance. There's a lot more tolerance in society, yet there's less tolerance in politics. Yeah. And that's weird to me. The insanity of the whole thing to me too is like this is something that in one of our previous conversations where we talked about how Joe Biden stepped down and Harris automatically became the nominee. They decided that she automatically became the nominee and no one chose her. Right. And so True. we posted a video on TikTok about that and I got some responses on that where people were saying, well, we don't care. You know, like if we voted for Biden, we voted for Harris because she was on the ticket. And the reality of that whole situation is, is you did not vote for her. You voted for him as president. Mm -hmm. She came along with him. You didn't vote yeah. for her. And if you remember back when she went against him, she got like zero of the votes. None. No one mm -hmm. wanted her. No one voted for her. And now all of a sudden you're willing to accept that because he's not there anymore. Like the majority of all the other candidates were the people that got votes and so it's it's amazing to me how you can stand behind someone who didn't had no support from anyone because you feel a certain way about something like if this yeah. was happening on the other side, it'd be the same thing. Like they're not automatically Trump had to go against all the other people to be able to get the nomination. And that's the way it needs to be. It needs to, you know, and I know they don't have enough time or whatever, but they should find a way to make it. So like you said, an open convention where they have to go in there and yeah. they have to make a decision because this is not now you have two choices that you know neither one are what anyone wants it seems like and now all of a sudden we've got this craziness going on where we're gonna we're gonna have to decide between two and one who didn't even get didn't even do it the right way yeah it's funny because it actually segues into what i wanted to talk about because we, we, we despite what everybody believes we don't even talk before we get on the set yep no, we, we just, just ran this off <laughs> so my my thing is is today was i wanted to talk about people the difference between words and actions, right? Mm -hmm. That the people's words are one thing and their actions are another. And that's just the opposite. Whatever we say is supposed to be what we do. Our word is supposed to be our bond. And so in, especially in politics, right? We're supposed to be a democracy, yet you see a very undemocratic process going on on the democratic side. That's very undemocratic, right? People aren't really getting to vote. So this goes back to the idea of with everybody is what in the world are we going to start saying that our actions are more important than our words? Because right. right now with these devices, with social media and all this, we've got all these words out there, but yep. think about what really matters to us. It's not what somebody says about us that matters. It's how somebody treats us. Right. And that's what, you know, I, 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 I just look at it and I think to myself, Let's listen to people when they, you know, if you say you give me a policy position, right? Then if you don't do it, I'm going to fire you. Mm -hmm. That's it, right? Because here's the thing. If I vote for you based upon the 10 things you say you're going to do and you do none of them, I'm going to fire you. Right. 
And I think that's where we've lost control of the process, because if we had any CEO that we paid to run our company and we said, hey, this is what you want to do. These are the three three objectives. We're going to make it simple. Here's three objectives. If he doesn't do them after a year, what are you doing? Yeah. You're firing him. Right. And that's the same thing I say to him as a general public. I, I saw somebody commenting about here. I just bought 11 items at the grocery yeah. store and it cost one hundred and fifty dollars. Basic stuff It's outrageous. It's exactly correct. OK, so. As a, as a general population, we're attributing this to the way the administration is handling our country. This is our CEO. Forget this whole president. Forget all this stuff. Right. The chief executive officer of the country. Uh oh, we lost Robert. Uh, hang tight here. We'll get him back in a second here. Um, Robert, we lost you on over there. And I cannot hear you right now. Um, we're going to do the magic mind real quick here. Just so you guys know, just going to let you know about this show sponsor magic mind um go check them out robert is joining back here but we'll get into this real quick i started taking magic mind because my sleep was insane i couldn't get um i couldn't get myself to wake up in the morning really tired all the time like that drinking lots of coffee this is a small little energy shot it helps you to it has a little bit of caffeine and a bunch of natural things like that keeps you awake and um tastes really good for a limited time you can go now over to magic mind and use code west T20 at checkout and get up to 48% off your first subscription and 20% off a purchase with the code West T20. All right. So Robert, are we back? Yeah, we're back. And so as I was saying, these guys are people, these people are CEO that are running our corporation called the United States of America. If you're doing a bad job, let's get them the hell out. Yeah. Okay. If you're doing a good job, you get, you get your contract extended, right? I mean, this should be really, really simple. And, and I think that's the point of them making, I want people to think about this. The point of making it so partisan and so ugly and so personal, I believe is to ignore the fact that they're doing a bad job. Right. And I don't mean that in the sense of a Republican or Democrat. I mean that in the sense of all of them, right? If we can divert your attention to issues, right, that, that don't matter, that are, that are largely political, then we don't have to realize that they're doing a crappy job running our corporation. Right. Right. And, and I think forget the fact that that we're partisan and start looking at the f- facts of the situation. Are we better off? Here's the thing. I don't like war and it seems like we're sponsoring two of them. Mm-hmm. OK, so my, my now that's me. If everybody else likes war and I'm the one that served and I'm the one that was there. But if everybody likes war, then keep voting for where we're the people we had before. Right. Just keep voting them and keeping them in office. That's the key, key issues for me. Or I don't care who you are. If this was a Republican and they were sponsoring war and high inflation, I'd want them out too. I don't yeah. care who you are. I don't care if you're a D, an R, or an I, or a C. You know, we used to run communists a long time ago, yeah. right? Um, Teddy Roosevelt around the Bull Moose Party. We've had lots of parties over the time. I don't care what the party is. What I care about is don't kill my my young sons and daughters, right, in wars that mean nothing to us and try to run my company pretty well, right? That means I'm going to be looking at how education is. I'm going to look at how the environment is. I'm going to look at how inflation is. These are the things I'm going to judge you on. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you look at like the money that has been spent and blown and thrown away. And then all we hear, we talk about, they talk about the deficit being high on both sides, right? The deficit is high, the deficit is high, the deficit is high. And I sit there and I look at it and like, yeah, the deficit is high. Where is that money going? And we're sending millions and millions of dollars to Ukraine and millions of millions of dollars to Israel and all these other places. And we're making no, nothing here. Nothing here. Like we're not, we need to invest it back into our own country to make our country what it needs to be, not someone else's country. And I understand helping people out, but on the same point, like when, when is enough enough? How, how in debt do we have to go to these other countries so that it just, it makes no sense to me. And I don't understand how people can look at one thing and and look at the other and then tell you that you have to think the one way. It's insane. Right. Right. And, And again, I think we just lost our way of how we evaluate anything like how we evaluate our mayors, how we evaluate our city councilmen. I think we've lost our way. I I think we just need to get back to the basics of, are you doing a good job or not? Yeah. With the things that matter to me. And people can say, well, I get into the ideological stuff. I understand that, but I don't really get into that. People vote their pocketbook. Yeah. Right. They really do. 
if my life is getting hideously more expensive, that's tough on me because it's very hard for my salary to keep up with all of the stuff that's going on. And so you look down and you go, hey, man, I am not better off. Well, OK, somebody else needs to run this place. Yeah. And you look at, you know, uh, Shifty over here on, on TikTok is talking about how, um, you know, what it costs, whatever. Everything's the new hundred dollars. Like I think about it, like you go out and you spend that money going out and you buy groceries. It used to be, you know, you can go in there and you can buy like five or six items and it's 60, $70. I went to the movies with my kids two weekends ago. Um, my, I went to, I went to watch Deadpool and Wolverine. My, my wife took the kids to the minions movie or to <laughs> despicable me Four. but we always go to the matinee because matinee is cheap, right? Like it's right. the last time I went to a matinee, it was $10 and I went to an IMAX movie. It was 10 bucks. Okay. I went to the regular screening, just the regular, normal, whatever the cheap version on the matinee. And it was $14 for my ticket, $14 for my ticket. And, mm -hmm. and that's a matinee. My kids were, I think were nine and my wife's was 14. We went in, you know, it's it, the movie, like the ticket is always the cheap part of the movie, right? You go and you get candy and you get a soda and you get whatever. And that can cost you like 20, 30 bucks. You're like, oh my gosh, this is all I got. I got a soda and a bucket of popcorn and it was 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. By the time we got done, it was $120 for all of us to get what we got. The movies, the, the candy, the popcorn, all that stuff and sit down and watch a movie. It is insanity to me. And I haven't, I mean, the last movie that I went to that was $10, I remember, was a year ago. How has mm -hmm. the prices doubled to go watch a movie in a year? Well, the the going rate when I grew up was, um, minimum wage was $1.85. Right. And it cost 50 cents to go to that matinee you were talking about. Okay, gasoline was 38 cents a gallon. Mm-hmm. So the weird part of $1.85 in minimum wage is you're like, that's ridiculous. But gas costs 38, 38 cents, cents a gallon. Yep. That means you could do an hour of work, put gas in your car, and go see a movie. Right. right? For, for an hour at minimum wage. Yep. What's minimum wage now? Seven dollars most place. I mean, yeah. I know they're trying to get fourteen, fifteen at the state level, but yeah, you, you can't do I anything. Think is Seven twenty-five. Right. So you begin to look at things and say, "What have you done to the middle class?" And I, I hate to say this, but we've crushed them. Seven thirty. I mean, the rich, the rich don't care. They don't because they're priced out of the market. But it's the middle class, and I call the middle class. It's the middle part of the population, the working professionals all the way down to those who are blue collar laborers they're struggling man that's and tough it's insanity stuff. too because what they're talking about and that was the other part that shifty brought up that i want to talk about it's like let's raise the minimum wage okay so we're going to raise the minimum wage in order to make it so that the new the new twenty dollars is the new hundred dollars that's what we're going to do we're going to raise that minimum wage so that we can cover that and then what we're going to find out is that we can't charge like you go to McDonald's. I was at McDonald's the other day, I took my daughter because she was working with me. She was sick. And so she, and so she drove around with me on my day job. It was $20 for us to both eat. I had to put my order into a computer and the guy brought the one guy brought the food out to me. So what did they do? They decided that, well, we're going to have to charge. We can't charge what we need to charge in order to cover the cost of this food. So we're going to put a computer in place of a person. So now the job is gone to take an order and mm -hmm. they've left it to a computer. So, I mean, you think that there's going to be these things that are going to help out by raising that minimum wage. It's not going to fix the problem. That's not fixing the problem. Raising the, minim raising the minimum wage needs to happen just because it needs to happen, but not at not because you think that it's going to fix the situation about inflation. What are we doing to fix the inflation situation? Yeah. That's, but again, you know, really when we talk about our politicians, it doesn't matter who they are. They come in and out of office and nothing changes. I, whether the D and R it doesn't matter. D R or I doesn't matter. This problem has not came overnight. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's a RAND study out. We were looking at free trade from 1975 forward and people are like, oh, okay, now you're throwing out a big number. Yep, last 50 years. So over the last 50 years, according to the RAND Corporation, which is not exactly left-leaning, okay? If you know who the RAND Corporation is, they were created out of an Air Force project that became very much government 
and they are very much center conservative. They estimate that the top 10% of the country has taken approximately $40 trillion from the bottom 90%. $40 trillion. Okay, that's a stunning number in, in concept. The total deficit right now is running at $33 trillion. So larger than the deficit is what the top 10% have taken out of the bottom 90. This is what's really happening. We talk about inflation and we're all pointing at inflation. No, no, that's not really what happens here. What is happening is the people that have capital who are rich are basically taking from the poor. That's what happens. Yeah. Okay. And so that $40 trillion. So how do you fix it? Well, these are large scale problems because they've been going on for a long time. One of the things we got hidden and the problem was able to, to, I don't know, go unnoticed was when we started doing business with China because labor costs were so low. So we did, didn't care because Walmart gave us cheap stuff. We didn't care that we were losing jobs. Right. And yeah. that that's a real problem because we we're losing a ton of jobs, but everybody was like, well, we're getting cheap stuff from, from China and it's cheap at Walmart. Well, you know, everything comes at a cost. It wasn't as cheap as you think it was. So there's some real big fixes here that, in, in all candor, neither side is looking at. And it doesn't matter who gets into office. You know, I have a piece coming out probably in the next couple of months in one of the big, um, big journals, and it is on free trade. How do you fix trade so that you stop crushing the middle class in America? Right. What do we have to do to fix trade so that it makes a difference in the economy? for the middle part the middle the bottom 90 is not the middle yeah that's everybody else how do we fix that well there's things that we have to do to make changes and one of the things is government is a very very poor mechanism for fixing anything unfortunately yeah yeah they can lead but as far as in other words i wouldn't send a dollar to the government in under the idea that if i that i wanted to get a dollar to wes i wouldn't send a dollar to government because it would come out as 30 cents to us. Yep. So they're a real poor vehicle for that. Yeah, and it's insane too. Like I think about taxes and things like that, that we pay, like I pay quite a bit of money in taxes every year and you, you kind of wonder like, where is that going? And I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I've heard him talk about different things. Like I'm, uh, I, I, I probably give half of my income of what I make back to, back to the people, back to the government, right? Like, cause that's, that's the reality of it. Like you pay, you pay your taxes and your wages, but then you pay your property taxes and you pay your vehicle taxes and your gas taxes and all those things that people don't yeah. really realize that you're actually giving Plus your fees. what you make. What's that? Plus your fees, your yeah. fees, all those little fees you have for this, that, and the other and licensing and all that stuff. All that is Teach going you. back into the system, right? Yeah. All of it makes a difference. Yeah. And it's insane. And they... They say that, oh, you know, I mean, I was, it was, it was listening to him at the debate, listening to him at the debate. Well, we're not going to raise taxes on anyone, anyone that makes over 400,000 or under $400,000. And it's like, okay, dude, there's not that many people who make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. And you're talking about people, $400,000. I mean, what's your deal here? You know, it's, it's insane. Like, I just don't get it. We've, we've got to figure out how to do it. And they're, be, they're being less than honest. There isn't enough. If you took all the rich, if you took the 1% and you taxed them for 100% of their wealth, it wouldn't fix the problem. Where do you think that, and, and if you're thinking about that, if you tax the rich more, where do you think they're going to take mm -hmm. that out on? Where's that going to go? It's is coming this, from me. Does this new $20 yeah. that's the $100 become $150? Because they're going to charge you for it. Right. It's, yeah, that, it that's not that's not the point of the system. But yeah. but again, that's the simple logic that everybody buys into. And, and then they give you a solution that says, hey, we just raised taxes on the rich. Well, nothing's changed. Yep, exactly. Right. Yeah. It's insane. Well, Robert, it's been it's been good getting back on here. We will be back on uh, Wednesday talking about the book. Like I said, ours victorious. Check it out. If you guys haven't got it, it's available on Amazon. Uh, really good book. Um, what makes what makes life better and uh, I'm really into these motivational books they are really cool Robert and I have decided that we're going to co-host this thing um, from here on out and uh, Mondays are a conversation Wednesdays is about the book until we get through the book and then we'll figure out what we're going to do from then um, I want to say thank, thanks to the sponsor Magic Mind head over to magicmind.com and use West T 
at checkout. You can get 48% off your first subscription, 20% off one-time purchase. Get you a little wake-up juice, supplement your coffee time. Robert, I hope you have a great day. I appreciate you, Wes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Take care. Great Monday, a great week to everybody out there. Thanks, yep. guys. Thanks for Bye. following and subscribing. We appreciate you all. Thank you.